Hey everyone, it's Stephanie again, and you are tuned into the review of Married at First Sight Season 14, Episode 13. Before we get started, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be the first to find out when I post these videos. All right, happy Friday, everyone. I hope everyone had a great week. Um, let's just jump into this week's review. Um, so this episode was the experts finally coming in and meeting with each couple uh, separately though. Dr. Pepper and Pastor Cal came in. thing I like about Dr. Pepper is she is, you can't find Dr. Pepper with a flashlight most of the season, but when she comes in, she usually delivers. Um, she has really great insight, really great feedback. Um, she gives them tools that they can use or offers a different perspective. I, so I really like when Dr. Pepper comes on. I just think that the the stuff that they came on with this week's episode should have been earlier um so they let these couples fend for themselves and like not do that well for like five weeks i think maybe it's six weeks right now and then they come in and it's like had they had these things and a lot of the stuff didn't happen before but had they had these things before it would have been much better um but nonetheless i think they they offer great insight when they are finally there so each expert met with each individual and then they gave them questions to ask each other to help further along some of their roadblocks and so on and so forth basically just help them so let's just kick it off with Steve and Noy <sighs> so Steve and Noy I think if if they last if they last it'll be because um there's some work that's being done or some compromise or some real like deep work because where they're at now is really it's hard it's hard to really see it it's hard to watch it because here's the thing steve's thing is the the lack of a job lack of a traditional job he has said um you know he he wants to be an entrepreneur he has these dreams he's consulted in the past he's very capable he has money in the bank all of these things whereas you know, Noy is saying, hey, I'm very traditional. I, this this needs to make sense for me in my mind um, in order for me to kind of connect with you. At this point, Noy is, is kind of throwing little tantrums and, and um, unable to connect with him emotionally because she doesn't feel like he can take care of her. Whereas his taking care of her or taking care of the family or contributing to the household looks different. It's not that he can't do it. It's just that it looks differently than what she wants. So they are unable to get to a point of, I think, true comfort. We saw them start to have that conversation this week, but I really feel like maybe it just got edited and it wasn't that great of an edit because I don't really think they came to a conclusion. You know, they had this conversation and he says, hey, there are ways that I can provide. So there's this way or this way or this way, whatever way you're comfortable. Clearly, Steve is more flexible in terms of like, hey, if you want to take some time and, and maybe seek something that is not so traditional and something that is passion filled for you, you can do that. Um, the thing that I would say with Steve is, although he is not as traditional or, and everybody doesn't have to be, um, he is still approaching the situation and her feelings with respect. And that is where Noi loses me. Noi is incredibly immature. And oh, that conversation with them on the couch, I really wish a third party was there because that, if I was the third party, I would have interjected and said, okay, no, the, the way you're looking right now in this conversation, the way you're responding shows a complete lack of um, concern and respect for the way that he feels. So we circle back to the social media issue where, um, you know, Noi posts something and, and, what bothers me about it is he knows it's about him. He has the idea that it's about him, but you know, she says, no, it wasn't about you, but then kind of says, but a little bit, it was about you. Grow up, grow up. She really gets on my nerves. She's incredibly immature. You know, I'm at the point where I don't think she deserves Steve. I'm getting to that point because she, he has literally stated a boundary and you can do that you can state a boundary um within your relationship and whether you're on board with it or not you can say hey this this affects my spouse in a negative way um so i'm not going to do that and they've also said don't do it you don't have to love it but you do have to respect it because 
if you don't have a foundation of respect, then like nothing else really can be built from that. You can do what you want to do based on how you feel and feelings are fleeting. And that's very dangerous to operate off of emotions and validate with the emotion. Um, so her kind of saying that she understands his perspective on the social media and, and she understands even Pastor Cal's on the social media, but she has a different perspective. What is the perspective, Noi? You're just a jerk. That's all that that is. Your perspective is that I felt like doing it, so I'm going to do it. Because you don't really have a perspective here. If you get it and you know that that could be hurtful and it's disrespectful and you hear that person saying, I don't like that. I don't want you to do that. I, I want to keep our things private. Um, if you hear that, but you're saying you have a different perspective, the perspective is that you feel like you can do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do that because you feel that way. Um, and that is not going to serve her in a relationship. I foresee just because of her terrible attitude in that moment, I foresee, let's say him getting a traditional job or him providing and her being comfortable with him providing, I foresee him or, or I foresee her still having issues with something else because she's going to find something else that serves her narrative of him not being enough or him not doing enough or him not being the right person for her because he doesn't want to clean both bathrooms because he doesn't want to pick up her dog's poop you know whatever the case may be because she just seems very very spoiled and she seems um unwilling to compromise and it's like the honeymoon period is over with Noi because at the beginning it was like, oh, she's great. She's, you know, she's so emotionally available for this and she's willing to be. And then you just start seeing her characteristics. And these are the things that are going to get in the way of a long term marriage for her if she doesn't knock it off. Because um, a lack of respect is just it's it's really there's it's hard to build. That's like building on quicksand um, and she's going to find out. So they they met with the. Um, they met with the experts and th their sessions were great and they were able to circle back with each other but i really feel like it hasn't been honed in enough unless they did it like privately which i could understand that too we did it privately and we didn't want to go into it on camera but we have settled it um but i think their bigger issue is not even the job thing it's it's more uh their way to connect with each other and respect each other and I don't think Steve is going to stick around. I feel like she's playing this like game of I may or may not be there based on what you do. But I feel like Steve may not stick around because that's going to weigh on him. And that's going to really kind of be detrimental to anything that they build if she doesn't get it together in terms of the way that she respects boundaries and the way that she communicates when she's upset. Because he is very... Uh, respectful and mature when he's upset and she is not so that was tough to watch <laughs> once again my favorite phrase Noi has been annoying again this week all right that's Stephen Noi next we have Elijah Wan and Katina so <laughs> Elijah Wan and Katina I you know I feel bad for Katina to be honest because she she responds to me like someone, and I've said this before, like someone who has not been in really healthy relationships, so she's always on guard with her responses. It's like if someone was always used to getting hit, not that she is, but just for the sake of this conversation. So if somebody reached across the table to grab the salad dressing and they naturally jerk back, she's like someone who's wounded and walks around in her wounds. Um, and she's trying to like be open and and change for Elijah Wan and do new things and take him for who he is. But who he is is not someone that makes her her best self. And I think that's the thing here. Um, because she doesn't seem to be like truly comfortable around him. When he's in a good mood, great. But when they're in a, a situation that isn't so great, we've seen that not go well many times. And even when they were talking at beach volleyball, um, you know her her mannerisms and the way her affect just the way that she carries herself her responses um they just seem so somewhat deflated or reserved you know and he's saying to dr pepper you know she feels like a shadow she doesn't she tells me things i want to hear well i wonder why you know people tend to do that when they're not comfortable talking to you knowing that they can trust that your response or your reactions are going to be something that isn't detrimental. Um, so it just made me sad because I, I, for me, I'm trained to 
see what isn't being shown and to hear what isn't being said. So when I'm looking at her, I'm not I'm not seeing the little laughs that she does and we're great. My husband's great. You know, she always presents like things are great. She'll she'll talk about something that isn't great, but for the most for the most part she's quite optimistic and um you know, it's just it's tough to watch the two of them together and I, I just I don't I don't like their dynamic and the thing is as much as Elijah one says he changes he hasn't Elijah one hasn't changed at all because you can see his interaction with Dr. Pepper and I think the only reason why Elijah one didn't pop off is because Dr. Pepper is an older woman and so that wouldn't that wouldn't have looked right at all or older in general I think he has the respect for older people so he wouldn't have responded um, as in a way that he would have with somebody maybe younger or or someone who felt like more of a peer um, he took every opportunity not to be um, not to be accountable within his conversation with with dr. pepper he took every opportunity to you know become victimized in his his perspective and and not really wanting to hear hey here are the things that you've done and here's how it shows up it's it's this fluff it's this fluff of like no we're good now and she's great and and it's almost like this arrogance that this this thing where he's above her where he's saying you know she's my wife has grown up so much and she has you know he's basically validated everything that dr pepper is telling him and everything that she has heard and he doesn't see it and so for me when you can't even see where you're wrong how are you supposed to grow from that and that's where i feel like really he needs like some mentorship like if everybody could have like a marriage mentor you know when they first especially on this show you can't have it in real life all the time although sometimes people do but for this show they need like a marriage mentor because he is if he could really see the way that it's cutting down or if somebody could mirror that for him I would love for him to to play a role reversal where people could respond to him the way he responds to other people and see how long that situation would last we know for a fact that he would not deal with that so it's tough to watch him in in Katina because they they say they're good and and they have this chemistry you know I, I guess um, and I said from the very beginning that they are very much like a wild card couple but I'm not seeing things that are um, rooted in a foundation that can grow you know for him he's always saying we'll see or or um, you know at the end I, I or I don't love yet or that's not something I'll say and the way he says it is it doesn't feel like you know I'm not there yet but I could get there it feels like you know you'll be so lucky to have me he acts like he's the prize and he is no prize he's a consolation prize he is no true prize not the way that I've been seeing him act so that's that's Katina and Elijah Wan you know the the dynamic between just Elijah Wan and Dr. Pepper says it all you know um I thought it was hilarious where uh Katina had the conversation with Pastor Cal because it just it was funny if you watched it you you saw how funny it was and it was just good to see her laugh and calm <clears throat> but you can see the difference between her uh, comfortable with someone having a conversation with someone versus Elijah one it's always very different all right that's Elijah one and Katina and last but not least we have um, Mark and Lindsay so Mark and Lindsay this week listen Mark and Lindsay to me this week although I don't think that they're a great couple together they provided a great example of the stuff that lies underneath the surface that really contributes to your marriage people think that oh that stuff happened so long ago it happened when I was a kid and a lot of the stuff that we manifest a lot of the ways we manifest in adulthood stems from childhood stems from experiences in childhood so I love I mean I literally got chills in the moment where Pastor Cal asked Mark um, about the dynamic with his mother and if he was afraid with, about being becoming his father and how Mark got choked up and said I've never been asked that before like that that alone I mean that alone for me if their marriage doesn't work out that that question that prompted probably some 
you know, chrysalis to a butterfly exchange in him will be worth this process because if they don't stay together, he will have some idea, some connection. And that's the beauty of the third party. For them to be able to objectively see and create this connection for you that you weren't able to see. And now you can do the work. Now you can have like a really good starting point. Um, so the fact that he pointed that out and was able to say, hey, you're actually mirroring the very dynamic that you don't want. Um, I've always said that Mark is checked out. So we see him checked out where Lindsay is so desperately, almost like in a way that turns him off. It's giving so much of herself because she so desperately, desperately wants that in return and he doesn't give her anything. So, you know, we know he's checked out a little bit. Uh, a lot of it, but we also see how that could be detrimental to someone who maybe is good for him, but he can't find the emotional space to give her what she needs. And so maybe you're not as re ready for marriage as you thought you were. And then we got to see um, Lindsay really talk about with, with Dr. Pepper. And I thought that that pairing was great. I loved seeing that Dr. Pepper was the one who sat with Lindsay because she's the one who needed that mother figure her mother is completely toxic they've had a terrible relationship um, she is she's so desperate for that older female uh, mentorship that that female per perspective and that love and I loved seeing her with Dr. Pepper that was the first thing that I saw I was like this is great because she needs this not that Pastor Cal isn't great, but she needs this because she's missing the influence, almost the protection, the guidance of a woman because um, she doesn't have that from her mom. And I love, love, love that Dr. Pepper said, you know, you have anger and you have hurt and let's pull from your hurt. Let's express ourselves from our hurt. It's way easier to express ourselves in anger. Anger is not as vulnerable, it's not as transparent, it's not as scary. So I can get upset, but usually what lies behind that is hurt. So I love that she pinpointed that for Lindsay. And I love that she was able to say, instead of coming from a place of anger, communicate how you feel from your place of hurt. Because then he will be willing to meet you in that space where he's not defensive or he's not escalating because he is now too upset. And now you can kind of pour into each other and give each other what, what each other needs. Because I think that on paper, Lindsay and Mark actually could be very good together. They have a lot of similarities. They have a lot of like um, things that they have that the other person needs, but they the makeup in person is, is a completely different thing. But they do have a similar background that would make it really special if they could find a way to dance together. Um, you know, I don't know that they will, but I thought that really Lindsay and Mark for me in terms of and being a therapist, watching the show and, and what I envision people going through or what I think is so important in this process as they really get to know themselves for the relationship. Um, I thought that that was a great example of when the experts really come in and actually do the work. It's only, it's six weeks in, so it's late, but, um, it was good to see. Anyways, that's my two cents. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this review. As always, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys next week. Everyone have a wonderful weekend.